Hello everyone and a very happy new year to all of you. I am Dr. Ravneet Kaur Gill, Assistant Professor in the Department of Anesthesia at Ames Mohali. I welcome you all to the next session of the DCBR course, which is Designing the Data Collection Tools. We all know that the data is our input for our research study. And it can be collected on various issues like the facts, knowledge, or judgment of the respondents or the subjects. The facts may include their uh, individual characteristics like the name, age, gender, place of residence, social status, monthly income, etc. We can inquire regarding the knowledge of their risk factors and healthy lifestyles. We can also uh, ask them regarding their opinions and attitudes towards certain uh, issues which may be important to the study. Data can be collected from various tools. It can be in the form and abstraction form, which is the review of the records. You can review the personal records or clinical records. For specific observations, we can uh, go through a structured observation guide in which there is a checklist of items and the subject ticks according to a, that checklist. But the most commonly used is a questionnaire based. I am sure you must have filled a questionnaire at some point in your life. It can be an interviewer administered or it can be self administered in which the participants are considered to be knowledgeable. In interviewer administered, it can be a face-to-face -face talk or a telephonically or computer assisted questionnaire uh, also. But when we are designing a data collection tool, we need to focus on few elements. Like the words need to be clear. The phrases should be balanced. And the sentences should not be too lengthy so as the subject loses their interest in that. The responses which are collected, they should be comprehensive. The questionnaire uh, should have clear instructions both for the subject as well as for the analyst. And the questions should be uh, in order and in context to the uh, subject study which you want to explore. When we're designing a data collection tool, we need to uh, focus on few areas like the introduction part of the data collection tool. We'll be fo focusing on the questionnaire which is most commonly used tool. Like in the introduction of the questionnaire, you give a brief outlook regarding the objectives of the study. And you also uh, give the elements of in informed consent in this part only. You can have identifiers, like the exact identifiers, uh, like the name, age, or the CR number of the subject. But if you want to maintain the anonymity of the subject, you can use coded ID numbers also. The next comes the body of the instrument, which is the most important part from where you will uh, uh, get your data. It can include open items, closed items, or semi-open items. We will be discussing this in a short while. Then you can have the <clears throat> instructions uh, area, uh, which includes the instructions. And it should be given in a different font so as to di uh, distinguish it from the actual questionnaire. And in conclusion, you give them a uh, thank, uh, thanks for their knowledge and for their valuable time. Like in open questions, now we'll discuss regarding the different types of questions. Like in open questions, you just ask a question and it is open for the respondent or the subject to answer as per their knowledge and attitude. Example, what do you look for most in a job? If you ask this question to 100 of people, Majority may say uh, may have a different answer, but few will have specific answers which will be different from the majority. Few must few uh, may say it may be for uh, financial issues or to enhance their skills to keep themselves busy. Some may have different answers, so you'd have a variety of answers to this kind of question. It gives a freedom of response to the respondent. It stimulates the memory and it is mainly useful when you're generating closed responses later on. It is used in the initial hypothesis raising stage. These kind of questions are very difficult to analyze and sometimes you may not have the 
complete data which you uh, require for your study subject. Then comes the open questions with closed ended answers. The questions are open, which may have a variety of answers, but the you give them options with a closed end answers. Like, what are the practices that may decrease your risk to get a COVID-19 infection? The respondent may know all the answers or two to three of them answers if you kept it an open uh, question. But when you give them options and have yes or no as their uh, closed end answers, the respondent will answer between yes or no only. So it is analyzed as a closed end question. In closed end questions, you may have two options or multiple options. Mostly two options are used in the form of yes or no or uh, for male or female. It gives you a very clear position and it should be used when you have to get answers to your key or important questions. But it may oversimplify the issue. In multiple options, one or more may be correct according to the respondent. And it may be difficult for one respondent to choose only one option. And it gives you a lot of data from those options. And when closed questions just give you quantitative answers, they give you a lot of continuous variables. They give you a particular answer, like how many times did you have fever in the last 12 months? Or what is the GCS score at the time of admission? So you'll, the respondent will give only a particular answer. And it allows the creation of continuous variables. Then there is another type of question, which is the semi-open questions, in which you have the uh, liberty of giving the respondent, giving them the freedom to uh, give answers, which, is, which are not given in the options. It gives a possibility to create another answer. So uh, it will help you to reframe your question in the next questionnaire. <clears throat> like if you, uh, what made you choose our school, whether infrastructure, curriculum, faculty, or extracurricular activities, and you leave one option, which is other. They want to give another answer to it, which may be significant to your study. That was the body of the in, uh, body of the tool. But when you have to formulate your questions for your questionnaire, you have to keep in mind that these questions should be short and precise, but they should be full and complete phrases. They should not be too lengthy so as to confuse the respondent. You should avoid ambiguities. Avoid any confusion in the questions. Use simple words, not too much of technical jargon. Avoid negatives or double negatives. So that it becomes too much complex for the respondent to answer. Like, don't you think hand hygiene is not uh, safe? Like that. Ask only one question at a time. Be specific to it. You should just focus at one question at one time. Do not confuse it too much. Avoid any neutral tone to avoid the influence. Uh, use the, I'm sorry, use the neutral tone to avoid any influence. Things that you should avoid when you are framing a question. Like as stated uh, before, it should not be complex. Keep it simple. You should not ask any leaded questions that you know that will uh, give you the, this kind of answer only. Do not have any loaded questions which should touch their social or emotional areas. Avoid any vagueness like how often do you go to this restaurant before you had diarrhea. Any long worded question will lose the interest of your respondent. Avoid double barreled questions such as, do you think government should spend more on education and less on healthcare? Be specific, focus on one issue at one time. Do not make any assumptions. Do not have any embarrassing or sensitive questions, which you think may be relevant to the subject. When you have framed your questions, you should look for the content of the questions and you should ask yourself whether are the questions relevant 
do they pertain to the research problem are the questions accurate means what uh, they will give you the data which you actually want to collect do the respondents have the necessary inf information on how to answer through uh, on how to answer through the questionnaire do the respondents understand and interpret the questions correctly that they are not too confusing and will the respondents give the information you have made it simple for them to understand and answer accordingly then you have collected your questions you have made your questions now you have to keep in order how to maintain the order of the question you should not start with too complex question in the beginning start from simple to complicated make the respondent comfortable let them have their flow of thoughts from simple to complicated questions start from general to specific questions do not focus on the specific questions in the beginning and then from casual to intimate make your respondent comfortable in your questions group together the questions which are related to the same topic don't hop here and there they should be in a same subsection if you have a uh, same questions in that area and identifying question identification questions should be at the beginning or the end they should not uh, you ask a question and then you ask for their identifiers in between and the question should be in the chronological order so as their memory is jogged in that chronological order from beginning to the end and introduce simple question as a break pertaining to that specific uh, section if the questionnaire is becoming too complex and triangulate through multiple questions on the same topic if the subject is important in this way you will generate more of data for that particular section of the questions and earlier the earlier question should not influence the response to the later ones it should not be conflicting amongst themselves they should flow from the facts and behavior to attitudes and opinions in the last you should not ask your opinions at first that may influence your later on, later questions and you you can split the sections and you can uh, combine them together you should space out the questions use large fonts most commonly uh, 11 or 12 number font is used number all the questions so as they do not skip in between and do not split the question across pages try to keep them on the same page that section uh, if one part of the question is on page number 2 and one part is on page number 3 it may lose some uh, information in between use uh, vertical format for closed end uh, responses and standardized coding should be used for questionnaires filter or pivot questions in filter questions they screen out the non qualifying respondents so you know that your responses are accurate and correct in pivot questions it is a type of filter question that is used to determine what version of a second question to ask so it will take the respondent in that direction to answer your questions now you have done everything and you need to finalize your data collection tool you have collected your uh, questions you have collected your types of questions and you have made it into a questionnaire but you should again check it before you are uh, finalizing it you should check it against your objective and what you want to analyze so you eliminate the unnecessary questions and you can add more questions uh, for any data that you want to collect then you review that data collection tool among your peers among your colleagues uh, uh, other experts statisticians right and then you it may not be uh, uh, feasible to always have your questionnaire in english you may need to translate into local languages and you also need to back translate it so uh, you need to uh, consider translation part also now everything is done and done you have made your questionnaire but you need to test it before actually putting it out in the 
research study. So you check that the instrument is clear, understandable and acceptable to your volunteers. You check the flow and the skip patterns, how the volunteers are uh, uh, giving you uh, the answers, in which questions they are mostly uh, com most comfortable in answering and which uh, questions they are not uh, giving any answers to. Check for your coding. Check the estimated time. If it is too long, the respondents may not give you 100% of your data. And you test it with those uh, and these volunteers. They should not be included in your research study. It may help you to alter your questionnaire uh, to make it more helpful in collecting the data which you actually hope for. So with this, I hope uh, I have given you an outlook uh, regarding the uh, designing the data collection tool, which will be very helpful in collecting the data. And then you can analyze it and you can uh, use it for your study. Thank you.